Hi everyone, so today I'm just going to show you how we assess and diagnose a frozen shoulder, a couple of the tests we use to do that. So the first thing we look for is an equal loss of active and passive range of motion. That's the difference between frozen shoulder and some other conditions. So when we say active range of motion, we mean how far you can move your shoulder. So L, if I get you to lift your shoulder up out to the side, and let's say L's shoulder is painful and she can only move it to here, that's her active range of motion. Her passive range of motion is then how far I can take it. So in L's case, she only has 90 degrees of active range of motion, but she has full passive range because I can take it up there. So that's not frozen shoulder. In someone with frozen shoulder, we would see L get to here, so that's where she stops, and then I still struggle to move it any further than that. So we'd test that into elevation, and we'd also test it into rotation. So we'd get L to go out to the side, so rotate out that way, say. If she can't, that's not a frozen shoulder because I can take it all the way out there. But if L can only take it to there and it hurts, and then I still can't take it any further, that's a possible sign of frozen shoulder. So the second lot of tests we do to determine whether a shoulder might be a frozen shoulder or perhaps another condition causing the painful shoulder is some resisted tests. So if we get L here to sort of do that external rotation for me against my resistance, okay. We'd also do that up into elevation, so push up against my resistance, okay. So in a frozen shoulder, those tests may be weak due to pain, but they were not usually very painful. Whereas with a condition like rotator cuff related pain, those will normally be really quite painful. 